Hey guys, welcome back. In today's video, I'm going to be painting the first page of my new sketchbook. If you're new here, I'm Gitu, your very own colorful mystique. I recently decided to move back to sketchbooks for a lot of reasons. I have never had the idea of painting something worthwhile for the first page of a sketchbook. I used to just dive in with whatever I had decided to paint at that point of time. But now, with this new motive in mind, my brain is exploding with creative ideas and I couldn't stand it. So despite having numerous unfinished sketchbooks, I'm starting a new one because I just want to get it out of my system. To paint the first page of a brand new sketchbook, to design something of my own, to create something without using a reference picture, to be that sketchbook artist, something which I have never done before. I know that starting the first page of a sketchbook doesn't have to be a big deal if you don't want it to be. In my case, I'm just too excited to get my creativity flowing. I have always been that person who uses reference images to paint something and the idea of creating something by designing it on my own spiked my excitement levels to the peak. Plus, it would really be a fresh start for my journey with sketchbooks. The sketchbook I'm using today is from a store called Blue Pine Arts and it is fully customizable. It is handmade and has 100% cotton papers which is kind of what suits my style. I had a lot of ideas coming in for what I should be painting on the first page but I wanted to do something personal and something that resonates with me. One of my most favorite topics to paint is water, oceans and seas and it was also the topic of one of my skateshare classes that I adore the most. Beaches and ocean also has a deeper meaning in my life. Having spent a significant number of years of my childhood in Seychelles, the beautiful tropical bluish-green waves of the Indian Ocean was something that me and my sister grew up seeing. So I wanted the sketchbook to reflect on that very thought. So to get a better idea while I was planning for the initial sketch, I took a photo of the sketchbook page in my iPad from the top. This way, I can then take it to Procreate and sketch on it. I could have also planned this using some thumbnail sketches on paper, but doing it on Procreate gives me a visual representation of how it will actually look on the sketchbook page itself. After several iterations, I was ready with the sketch. A brand new sketchbook! Once my planning process was complete, I decided to jump right in and dive into the sketchbook page. So let us begin. I usually don't do a lot of sketches for paintings and prefer to paint right away with my brushes unless they are solid objects like the boat in this one. So I just marked out the structure of the waves and sketched the boat and then was ready to paint with my watercolors. I decided to go with my Silver Golinski Sable brushes for this one, which is one of my favorites and something that I keep going back to. I wanted to start with my favorite blue, which was Thalo Blue, and is something that I use for painting water often. And at this point, I just turned on my music and zoned out. I wanted to create like a dramatic look of the waves on one side and a splash on the other side so I kept on adding additional colors onto the wave area just to create the tropical bluish green appearance. Of course, I had to add in darker accents for the shadow areas for the wave. I wanted to add some white splatters with gouache onto the twisting wave part and I felt that giving a subtle grey tone to the background would accentuate my white splatters a bit more.
Adding the splatters is always super therapeutic for me and I try to find places everywhere where I can add them. Once I was happy with the wave and the water region, I started straight away onto the boat. I did initially have a great difficulty choosing the right colours for the mast as I didn't want to create something which would take away the focal point of the painting from the wave and the water splash. Hence, I decided to go for a muted teal and crimson shade that would make the boat in a similar analogous colour scheme of the wave. Without the reflections of the boat, the whole painting seemed unrealistic, although it really is unrealistic anyway, but I kind of wanted to get the element of naturality to the scene. Overall, I was super happy with the way it was coming out. I took my micron pen out to draw the strings of the sails, of course, I don't know the marine names of those strings, but honestly, I was practically holding my breath while drawing those straight lines. I felt that I'm more confident to draw a line using a liner brush, which is what I had been doing for so long, and this felt super scary. I think I also had the fear in my head that I was capturing this on camera, so I had to get this right. But once I had finished with that string, I felt super confident and happy with the way it turned out. Once I had added some white highlights at random places, it was time for me to make the sketchbook truly mine, to give it my mark. I went with the dates, that is the month and the year that I'm starting the sketchbook on the flag, which is obviously why I planned a huge flag on the boat. I will fill the end date when I finish the sketchbook. I added my contact details onto the side of the boat so that whoever opens the sketchbook in the future will know me and my art. And also, this is a great way to possibly get back a sketchbook if you ever lose it because whoever finds it might return it to you using the contact details in it. I really wanted to create something special and fun that the first page of my sketchbook can convey and this painting is really close to my heart. So completing this is like a celebrating moment for me as this was the first ever painting that I designed purely on my own without any kind of reference whatsoever. Before I share the final reveal of the sketchbook page, I just wanted to talk about my Instagram page where I post a lot of behind the scenes process videos and more insights into my art journey. Thanks to all of you who have been supporting me in my journey till now it from Instagram or YouTube and I'm forever grateful for the support and for making my dreams come true. Next week I'll be sharing a super amazing book with you all so don't forget to subscribe to my channel so you don't miss out on the new videos. Isn't it amazing? I love it. I love it purely because it is my own. Cheers to many many of my creations in the future. Alright everyone, that's it for today from my side. Thank you so much for watching. I hope this inspires you to create something really cool in your sketchbook. I absolutely love the way it came out. Don't forget to leave a thumbs up if you like what I do. See you in my next video. Bye!